Let's get cracking. Um, I'm Alex Membrio. It's weird to do my own introduction, but um, I started Cardinal Web Solutions a little over six years ago. Um, and today we are going to talk about how we started it, why we started, and how we've scaled it. So before I get going, how many of you guys are entrepreneurs? Okay, two, three. Very cool. Do you work in an agency? Everybody in an agency? Okay, well then today we'll apply. Good. Um, so a little background on Cardinal. We, um, we've been featured in all the big publications and made Inc. 5000 the last few years and Pace Setter and Best Places to Work and all that fun stuff. And um, the growth has been great, but the people we work with are even better. And, and that's what really truly makes it special. So a little background on Cardinal. Um, so you can see here some of the vitals. We started in 09. My business partner and I, we knew each other from Georgia State, came out of college. Um, we started Cardinal one day after my son was born. Don't recommend that timeline. Don't, don't start a business that, that soon after having a kid. Uh, but we started with just a few hundred bucks, and this year we'll do three and a half million. We typically grow 30, 40% a year. The first four years we were doubling every year. Uh, and then it gets a little more difficult as, as time goes on. So currently we have 40 Cardinals. We just moved to Buckhead in January. Uh, we got a big, beautiful office. We were in Norcross before that, and um, we were finding it hard to recruit because all of our younger millennials live in the city, and they want to work in the city. And I don't blame them, so do I. I live in Brookhaven. So uh, we moved to Buckhead, and it's been good to us. So as you'll see up there, we uh, maintain decent net profits. That's everything but before taxes, right? So the only thing you'll have after that number is taxes, um, which uh, you know you can have your own feelings on. The um, Average recurring revenue is about $6,000 a, uh, a client. So when we started, the first clients we were signing were 200 bucks a month, and we were ecstatic to go get those SEO deals. You know, it was a local kayak guy, and our first deal ever was an ice cream van, and why an ice cream van needs digital marketing is completely beyond me. But um, anyways, we started with those, and now we're about 6,000, uh, and the clients we're going after are about double that size now. and so. We're in our own growth period and going through our own growth pains. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about how to build the best team culture clients. So I know you've all sat through different presentations and they give you a lot of ambiguous stuff on culture and how to make your people. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we do at Cardinal uh, and hope that you can take that back and replicate some of it. Um, I've been in Vistage for three years and gone through lots of management training, and we've applied a lot of these fundamental things at Cardinal. So it's a mishmash of those things. So how to build the best team. So we're in professional services, so are all of you. So the team is the widget, right? So we're not building widgets, we're building a team. So the A players are, are really what transforms your agency. Bs and Cs do not, okay? The A players are really what transforms things. And so you have to do everything in your power to go find those A players, latch onto them and give them the freedom that it takes uh, to let them spread their wings and, and do what they need to do with your agency. Um, how we have found them uh, is predominantly through referral, okay? Um, and then you'll have the question of how do you get the first one, right? How do you get the first few A players and then refer out? So it's a little bit about luck and a lot about networking, right? And so you have to be present in all the AMA and all the marketing things around here. Supernova is one of them. And you get in with all these people, and uh, then eventually you'll find your way to an A player that wants to come help build your agency, right? And so you find one of those, and then they will refer out. On LinkedIn, it's possible to go reach out to people on LinkedIn. It doesn't it's not highly effective unless you have a full-time HR person dedicated to poaching. Unfortunately, that's what it's called, but that's the truth. Um, we find that the LinkedIn jobs are quite effective, and you pay 300 bucks. It runs for 30 days, and, and you'll, you'll find a couple good people here and there through those. So uh, that's worked for us, okay? And people ask us, you know, how do you have such a pleasant staff? How's the culture so phenomenal? Why is everybody so engaged? It's really simple. How do you get... How do you get people that smile a lot? You hire smiling people. We look for smiling people, people that are really happy, right? And so when you come in and you interview, we look for the twinkle in their eye. We look for a twinkle. Um, I call our staff Youngry. We got three of them here. Young and Hungry, Janetta's working right now. See, she doesn't stop. Um, so we call the staff Youngry, and I look, for, um, I look for people that come in and really want to learn and grow. You know, if they've already done the job in another agency, it's 
it's probably not going to be the best fit. I want somebody that will be challenged and really want to grow into a new position at Cardinal. So we hire for people that will be ready for two steps above what they're being hired for. And I want people that are really kind to others and, uh, and want to learn. Okay, so as you scale, you'll start hitting certain plateaus. And this is applicable to any, any company. It's not just agencies. As you hit $2 million in revenue, You'll find that you'll be going from entrepreneurially run words, um, to professionally managed, okay? And you have a decision to make at that point once you hit about two million. Do you want to keep doing all of the work yourself and just have a small team around you, or do you want to scale? Do you want to delegate out to a leadership team and have them help you scale the agency? I chose the latter, right? I have bigger dreams for Cardinal. I want to become the best digital marketing agency in Atlanta, 10 million in revenue, 2 million EBITDA. Uh, and so I knew I could not do that myself. So we started delegating out all kinds of leadership positions. Let me show you here on this spreadsheet, okay? So up here, you're gonna see our, our team structure. And so these were the first five to be hired, right? And so um, when you're starting out, you don't know what an accounts department should look like. You don't know what a marketing, a sales department, and an operations the SEO department, so on and so forth. So we went and hired VPs, really experienced people, that knew what those departments should be structured like, what the work and the quality and how we should treat clients. Okay, we invested a ton, we went and found four others that run the leadership team with me, okay? That has enabled us to scale beyond two million. So then you get to three million dollars in sales. And what you'll realize is that at that point, you need managers, okay? So you have the leaders and the leaders uh, at two million are being stretched over the next year, year and a half as you scale, you'll find that your leaders are actually doing entry level work because you don't have enough people at every level, right? And so then if you wanna go above that crest, you have to hire people to help delegate that responsibility, okay? So we hired recently over the last six months or so, we've hired a management team and so we have a manager over every department at Cardinal. So there's an SEO manager, a content manager, a paid search manager, okay? The thing also to understand about management is they're translators. Um, let me explain for a second. So leaders of companies that have been uh, you know, five to 10 years of experience, they can think in years. They can see into the future in one to two year increments, okay? People that have just started at an agency think in one to two day increments. You know, what do I have to do today? They don't see yet how it will affect next week, next month, certainly not next year. Managers are the translators between the leadership strategy and vision and the day-to-day -day execution, okay? So if you have a leader talking to somebody at entry level, it's very difficult for that message to get translated because the leader speaking in strategy and vision and the entry level person that's just come into the agency world doesn't understand those decisions and how they will be affected in a year. So the management layer is essentially a translation layer, someone to take the upper level vision and then translate it down to the staff and make sure the work is trafficked appropriately, okay? Really important learnings from us. Uh, managers are also advocates for their department. So you need people doing career pathing and goal setting and all that kind of fun stuff, right? That much is obvious and that's why it's really important to have department managers that understand all that and can work with your team to help achieve their goals, right? We want our staff to grow up grow out of Cardinal eventually. We want to help them achieve their goals of getting whatever position or whatever dream job. If that's at Cardinal, great, we love that. But we understand we have millennials. We want, we want our staff to, to go achieve bigger and better things if that's what they seek to do, right? And so the managers are advocates for that. The managers will also set up different things for them, right? And so each manager will be responsible for their own P&L, their own department profit and loss statement, right? And so small agencies like us are all fighting for resources, okay? There's only a small pot to go around for all the departments. And so the managers will go to the leadership team and say, we need this resource, please give it to us this month. And so they're advocates for that department's growth. Uh, and so we added the leadership, now we've added the management team, and, and this is kind of what it looks like at this point. So up here, you'll see the leadership team, and then you'll see the management team somewhat in the middle. And then later on, I'm going to explain our pod team structure, which is different than almost every other agency here in town. All right, questions so far? No? Nope. Self-explanatory? Good. Okay, so how to build the best culture. All right, so we have a certain system of feedback at Cardinal Web Solutions. We call it our cadence 
of communication, our cadence of communication, okay? So we have this cadence of communication so that we're constantly soliciting feedback from our staff. So it starts Monday morning at 9 a.m. Monday morning at 9 a.m., our 40 plus cardinals gather around a meeting space at the nest, and two of them act out one of our 30 fundamental behaviors, okay? Sorry, math is gonna be on today's test. Um, so two of them act out one of our 30 fundamental behaviors, okay? So these are the 30 fundamental behaviors on our mouse pads, they're also on our walls, and, and everybody knows them. Um, so we have a lot of people coming to us right out of college. We decided it might not be the best idea to allow our cardinals to decide how they should act and instead give them a set of behaviors and a structure around what our culture should, should be, okay? And so we broke it down. Not only our acronym is genuine and respectful, it's great, right? And so you can see the, the highlights up there. But then we broke it down to hit your deadlines on time, treat each other in this way. You know, there's, it's broken down into very specific items and then two people act out one every Monday morning. Okay? All right, so it continues. By 9.30 a.m., I've sent out a one-page weekly memo to the staff. In that one-page weekly memo, this is only the top version. I'm going to show you guys the rest of it. Um, but I outline where we're going, and then I outline how we're going to get there. So I always reiterate what we're trying to achieve, which has become the best digital marketing agency in Atlanta. Obviously, that's quite vague. What does that mean, right? And so then you have the pillars to how we're going to achieve that, and then I'll alternate the SWOT analysis once a quarter, right? And so we have a bunch of fresh faces coming to Cardinal all the time. I want them to understand exactly where Cardinal's going and how they play a role in achieving that. Once a quarter, I'll also send out our financials to the staff and walk them through uh, what we've been doing well, not so well, how their department is working. You see, Millennials, we all, I'm a millennial as well, we come from a video game generation, right? We sit down to play duck hunt, we shoot 10 ducks, we feel good if we get a high score. Now it's, we sit down to play duck hunt, we shoot 10 ducks, we post a high score on social media, if we get a bunch of likes, we feel good. Well, millennials want that high score, and so we try to give that to them. We show them that by department, how your department is achieving the revenue goals, the profit goals, the growth goals for Cardinal. Our future is to roll out a comp and bonus plan that ties to that as well. It'd be only fair, right? Um, so here we have this, and then we get into cardinal happenings. Um, Lampshade and freshmen didn't know they'd make the, the cut this, um, this presentation, probably. <laughs> Take a picture. Um, so we, uh, I want all of our colleagues, all of our cardinals, to, to know exactly what's going on at Cardinal, new projects we're bringing on, new fun things we're doing. Philanthropy events are very important to our younger staff, um, and to me as well quite frankly. Um, and so I want them to know everything that's going on. And then what I haven't included in here, but the next part of this is actually what I'm working on that week. I'm very transparent about what is going on in uh, my role and what are the bigger things that we're working on. You see, I don't want my colleagues creating their own story for what's going on in the corner office. I want to set the narrative. It gets rid of a lot of rumors and a lot of um, yeah, basically a lot of that mill running around, okay? So I set the narrative so that everybody else understands where leadership's at. Okay, furthermore, by Friday, so we just talked about Monday morning, that's at 9 and 9.30 a.m. Friday, by 2 p.m., everybody's answered a set of five questions. It takes them 15 minutes. The name of this tool is called 15.5. 15.5, Has it, have any of you all ever heard of this tool? Okay, so it's my favorite CEO tool. So every one of our colleagues goes in and answers questions that the leadership team, someone from leadership, will put three questions in there, three to five, and it can be anything from, you know, well, you have up here, you know, what is your favorite type of pumpkin spice latte, to uh, what would you do differently if you were CEO? That's the one question I wouldn't highly recommend. There was plenty of suggestions that Monday morning when I came in, didn't make for a good Monday. But lots of fun questions. And so what this enables us to do is leadership all the way down to entry level can see how each other's feeling. So I'm reading every single one of our colleagues' answers to this every single week. I know how everybody's feeling, what they're thinking. And what it enables us to do is pivot on a weekly basis rather than monthly, biannually, or yearly. Okay, and so a lot of companies and agencies, as they get to our size, they start to move slower. They're big, dumb, and stupid, and it takes a lot more to move the ship. I don't want to be like that. I want us to be an entrepreneurially run company that's flat and can move very quickly. This is one of the tools that helps us do that. I really, really highly recommend this one as you guys scale up. Okay, monthly. 
So yesterday, we had an off-site monthly leadership meeting, right? And our leadership team of five will go off-site, and we'll talk about the bigger picture stuff. We'll break down some tactics, how we're going to fix problems. What we do a little differently, most companies will do that, is the next day, I'll send out a memo to the entire company letting them know what the leadership team was working on the day before. You see, once again, I don't want our colleagues to make up their own narrative. I want to give them the story of what's going on in those offices so they understand what we're trying to do. We're on their side. Please continue to give us feedback. Okay. Once a month, we have the most fun event that Cardinal has, and uh, the pods will get together, and each pod presents on fun things they've been working on. It's the monthly company update. Really fun stuff. And so each pod will present uh, cool client results or what they've been doing. It could be random selfies taken in a park. It's, it's whatever. It's a good time. Um, but we'll also have uh, presentations from leadership. And um, in the last few, I've started to educate our staff on our financials. Um, I'm very transparent about what is going on with our financials. I want everybody to feel the same sense of ownership that I do, right? And so we'll go through the financials, we'll go through some of the P&L, client concentration mix, stuff like that with the entire company. Um, I gave this talk to 400 CEOs last month and all of them were squirming in their chair when they heard that I was going through the financials with the, my staff because uh, it is pretty unconventional. I, you know, what I told them is that financials can be dangerous without context, but with the proper education, financials can be quite empowering. If they see how the high score works and what their role is in helping to achieve that high score, they won't feel like a cog in your machine. They'll feel like they can really make an impact. Um, and so all of our colleagues really feel like they are one with leadership and that we, all, we are all trying to achieve the same objectives. Okay. Furthermore, I'll, I take out uh, three of my colleagues out to lunch every month uh, to get face-to-face -face feedback. There's nothing better than it. 15.5 is great, but you really get even more out of you know, hanging out with people face-to-face. -face. And then uh, usually within the first month of an intern working at Cardinal, I'll take them out to coffee and learn a little bit more about them. So uh, very collaborative environment. Okay. Let's talk about clients. You guys love your clients, all of them? Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. No? Tell me about that one. Um, don't, you don't have to say their name. Sure, sure. You can say their name. Yeah, I, I would say. What bothers you about? I have a client who is used to running their own um, search campaign. Okay. And they right. invested at a $600 level, and they're a bail bond agency, and they had a certain level of results. And once my agency took over the account, they're investing at a much higher level, three thousand dollars a month, yeah. and they're not getting the same results. And she keeps turning on her campaign and competing with mine, um, which is driving me crazy. Really? So you got and, and, and then complain about the results almost every day. And so we're just having a bit of a, a hard time getting to where we need to. Yeah, that you'll find that with uh, with owners that have run their own campaigns and are know enough to be annoying about marketing, you're going to run into that just about every time. Yeah, if they're not willing to take the reins off, it's tough, isn't it? So what are you going to do? Um, so we've been in a lot of communication with um, you know, our sales team and um, through them with the client. We've been making a lot of little tweaks and also reporting at a really high level in terms of you know, questions about the marketing or, or where exactly their clicks are coming from in regions. You know, or we're delivering as much information as I want to know. Because right. they're used to having that transparency. Yeah. All right, good. You're, are you helpful? Am I helpful? Are you helpful? I'm hopeful. Are you helpful? I'm hopeful. I'm not sure yet. Uh -huh. We're still seeing it. All right, cool. Go find a couple others just in case. <laughs> <laughs> um, good, good, good. Yeah, so we're going to talk about how to find the right types of clients and, and how to keep them. So differentiation. Um, there's a lot of full service agencies and a lot of us are full service by necessity. Someone wants to bring a piece of business but they want you to be able to handle the creative and the search marketing and the content marketing and social PR. Um, and so you can't be experts at everything unless you're 360i or Red Ventures or one of these huge, huge agencies. Very difficult, right? Um, so when you're smaller, you have to get really great at something. So the market understands what you're great at and you start to build clientele around it. So I, our general rule of thumb is at least 30% of your staff and revenue needs to be attributed to one service line. Once that happens, you can start to build other service lines. We started out as an SEO company in 09 
And we got known for it, and we're all over the internet for Atlanta SEO, you can't escape Cardinal. Um, and as we scaled that, we realized we needed to get really great at paid search. And then that went into design and creative and social media and um, now content marketing and PR as it's transforming. But um, yeah, you only add one service line at a time so you can do really, really great things, okay? Okay, I call it charity work, but it's really just dis heavy discounting. So once you get a lead or you've gotten connected into a really great client and a vertical you're really excited about, feel free to heavily discount that work, get a great case study and go sell five more of them. So this is our shining star at Cardinal, uh, Papa John's. When the opportunity came, um, I made the decision to almost nearly give it away. I mean, we were, we were losing our tails on the investment every single month. And we did that knowing that Papa John's could lead to other bigger things. And, and now, a few years later, they've grown six, seven times. They're our second largest client. Now we're going to, uh, we're currently pitching Popeyes and Moe's and churches and all of these things. And so um, we're looking to bring on more QS arts in a vertical we really care about. And so the work really, um, the case studies has, has really helped us grow that vertical. So if you find a vertical, you find a client that's really small, uh, but it's a big brand, but they want to start small with you and do a test, definitely can be worth it. Definitely can be worth it. And you need those logos on your website. You need those logos on your website. Something that really helped Cardinal in the early days was I went and sold just a couple franchise markets of hotels and express oil and stuff like that so that I could get the logos on the website with a case study. Nobody ever knew those were not the national or corporate campaigns. Um, so we had local case studies that really applied to getting more local uh, clients. Okay, So definitely the logos are important. Um, so, at Cardinal, we have the five cardinal rules to keep or onboard uh, a project, right? And so, this year, what are we in? We're in 2015. Earlier this year, um, we were still focused on revenue, 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 and we were taking all kinds of dicey projects. Um, anybody taking a project you had a feeling might not go so well, but it was going to pay well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were doing that plenty. And it, and it was yielding the exact results you would expect. Nobody was jazzed up about it. The margins were there, but nobody cared. And the client was a schmuck and would leave in three months, right? Because I could tell you didn't care. Um, so poor client. So we decided to come up with five cardinal rules. And, um, and we abide by them. Uh, we've gotten really serious about them. So if it's not something we're passionate, can grow, is profitable uh, from the get-go, we, we will not onboard the project. Um, last month, we, we realized that a lot of our grandfathered-in clients were uh, dragging our teams down. They complain the most and, um, and offer the least, right? And so that's what you're, you're kind of running into with the owner-operator there. The smallest ones, it's the 80-20 principle, right? So 20% of your clients will complain take up 80% of your time. We tried to shift that a little bit, right? Um, and so last month we offloaded about a quarter of our clients that were, didn't fit this mold anymore and we partnered with a small business SEO company and we partnered with them and we're making sure those clients are still really well taken care of, they're still under our brand, but uh, we're partnered with a company and we, and we got those out of the nest. Um, so that our staff could work on um, larger projects that can really grow with Cardinal. So that was a serious investment, a serious decision, so we take our Cardinal rules seriously. So how many of you guys have heard of Net Promoter Score? Net Promoter Score? Two? Three? Cool. Um, so some agencies will do this quarterly. I think that's, I think that's overdoing it. Uh, I think your clients are going to get tired of telling you their feelings. It's like my girlfriend at night asking me every day. Um, so. We will do this about annually. We'll have our account, we partner with a firm, and then we have our accounts director um, um, coordinate with her, and she reaches out to our clients and, and takes their temperature, right? And so we comp some of our people on net, net promoter score uh, scores. Uh, and you want to find out exactly how your client is doing. It's not just a number. When you're interviewing them, they'll actually give you qualitative feedback. Um, like this was working when I was onboarded. I wasn't pleasantly surprised. It seemed like nobody knew what the hell they were doing. We're like, eh. Um, so we get a lot out of doing this net promoter score, um, it, but we'll only do it about once a year. Okay, let's talk results. Let's talk results. That's the only thing that matters. Okay, so Cardinal pod structure. I want to talk about this a little bit because we're a little different than most agencies. This is my paint skills, by the way. Um, it's about as good as it gets for. For me, I need to find another marketer. Um, so we are divided up a little differently than most agencies, okay? Most agencies will have 
all of the SEOs sitting together, right? And uh, those SEOs will work on whatever random clients and we're different than that. And so when you walk into the nest, you'll see pods of people. And in those pods, you will have an account manager, a project manager, an SEO content, a social media, and a paid search person, and a creative maybe, as we scale the creative department. So we're structuring that pod department. That pod works on a set of clients. That pod works on a set of clients, right? And so they get jazzed up as the performance of the clients. They all work together to promote that uh, client. So because we are now running integrated campaigns, we felt like the pod team was really necessary to uh, have everybody on the same page, right? Because SEO can't operate in a vacuum. It's running similar campaigns to paid search. They need to work together. It needs to be promoted through social media. So everybody needs to work together. That's why we're in the pod system. Jemiah will get you in one soon. Sorry, we threw you into the intern corner. Um, so we're in a pod system there. You can see Papa John's has its own um, pod. As clients scale, they will get their own team of people. That is pretty typical at, at larger agencies. So we aspire to be like, um, OK. so. This is also fundamental here. Um, so account managers are very different than project managers. And I think these titles and role descriptions get confused at agencies all the time. So I wanted to provide clarity. One kisses babies. The other one makes sure that the, uh, the, the butt is wiped after the baby goes to bed, OK? Before the baby goes to bed, preferably. So we've divided out this role to where we have uh, it's two very different types of people, and we're still progressing in this. Um, but we're hiring somebody that's basically the relationship person, and then pairing that person with a project manager, someone that actually makes sure the project gets done on deadline and budget. Okay? And as we scale, we've learned this, and we're hiring two different, very, two very different types of people for this role. What you'll find is as you grow, you're going to find an assistant account manager that you want to grow into the account manager role, right? And people will hold multiple roles. Your account managers will sometimes do the, do the role of the project manager. That's fine, but as you get bigger, you're going to have to divide out those roles. It's two very different types of people. Very different types of people, OK? All right, prices, prices, prices. So a lot of us go into this uh, debate about pricing, and you, know, you don't want to shaft the client, which is fair. But this is what I'll tell you. Um, clients want you to get them really great results. Clients want you to do really great work. It's very difficult to do that on low margins. So if you're having an internal debate about resourcing, how you should price the project, and the SOW, you really want the deal, but you don't want to price it too much, err on the side of caution and go a little bigger if it's not a brand you're really trying to get into. Um, the more margin you get, the more resources you can allocate against that project to help it grow. Um, and we find that very instrumental at Cardinal, right? And so now as we grow, we're really trying to build some more margin into our projects so that we can assign better and better talent to them. Okay, so we have no guilt in, in raising our prices. We're just going to give those clients that much more. Okay, financials. Um, so these are some of the financials that I make sure we know. You need to know profit, p and by department, your revenue load, client concentration is very important. We have a client, Cox Media Group. Um, Meredith works on Cox Media Group. Loves it, right? Good. Just keep saying that. And um, so Cox Media Group was almost 40% of our business at one time, and uh, it was getting out of control. That's a very scary situation uh, because obviously what happens if, if they leave, you have to lay off half your staff. And nobody wants to do that, right? And so luckily, uh, Papa's grown, and um, we're selling more pizza, and that has taken some of the load off CMG being so, so large. And so we, we knew CMG was growing a little bit too quickly, and so we really tried to scale up our other clients to uh, balance that out. Another thing, if you own an agency, nobody wants to buy an agency with a client concentration over 25% in one client. Okay, So know your EBITDA numbers, profit numbers, all that kind of stuff, client concentration mix, revenue by department, and then share a lot of that with your staff. Share a lot of that with your staff. Give them the high score to achieve. And when all else fails, I've gotten a ton of value out of asking mentors. I've got a lot of mentors in the agency world, uh, a lot of CEOs that have have been where I'm trying to go, and they saved me from making a lot of mistakes. Um, we also try to find mentors for some of our colleagues um, so that they can have different relationships and know what their role looks like in, in other agencies, OK? Thanks for having me. I hope this all helps you get to the next step of where you want to go. Appreciate y'all's time. Thanks. So. Uh, we've got a little bit of time. I know y'all are probably hungry, but if you got any questions, um, yeah, what's up?
Um, when you started back in 09, how important, if at all, was a business plan when you first started, like hitting the ground? Sure, sure, sure. So how important was a business plan? I'm supposed to repeat the things in a complete sentence. So uh, I didn't make a business plan. You know, and I went to school for management, and uh, I didn't make any business plan. My business plan was to sell the crap out of websites and get the hosting money, the $50 a month for hosting, and we were going to sell 500 and get $25,000 a month in hosting. We sold our first website. It went terribly. We realized we weren't creative at all, and we pivoted to SEO and paid search, and we got known for SEO. And luckily, that first project went really well in SEO, and so we kept doing that. Business plans are cool until exactly what happened to us happens to you. And that business plan all goes to crap because you're not good at whatever you thought you were going to be good at and you pivot to something else. And then where was the plan for that? There wasn't a plan for that. So there is merit in business plans and planning. It's just not my type of personality. I'm too ADD for it. I can't sit down and build spreadsheets and Word documents and all that stuff. I'm much more of a just creative and visionary and, and get the, have, I have uh, integrators that get all the vision stuff for me done. Um, I think going through the exercise is important, though, as you launch a new product or service line or company. You go through it. You see what the business plan is asking you to think about, market competitiveness, barriers to entry, stuff like that is important to think about. It's fine. It's just no bank's going to care. You're not going to care, whatever. We went and got a loan last year, and the bank asked for a business plan. I went and copied one from the internet, just threw digital marketing terms from another website on there. I was like, here you go. I still got the loan. What else we got? 750 bucks, so good, good question. Um, I, when I came out of college, my dad started a company. It went under six months later. I was working at it when it went under. Um, and so we went on unemployment. And so uh, we were living in a little crappy post Brookhaven apartment on unemployment checks. And so I used one of those golden checks, $220. We used three of them and we started Cardinal. Um, we went and got Comcast and Vocalocity and all this stuff so we could cold call. And then we just started cold calling with the 700 bucks. We lived like paupers for a couple of years, you know. If anybody thinks you're going to hit it rich when you start a company, man, you're not. You're not. We thought we would be going to opera and raining $100 bills down. Three years later, we like took $1 bills and we like threw a couple and we were like, oh, shit. <laughs> yes, sir. What's, what's the end game? So it's one of two things, right? And so agencies don't sell for big multiples. Um, so they'll sell for three to five times EBITDA, three to five times yearly profit, which isn't a ton of money. Um, so what we're trying to get to is 10 million revenue, 2 million EBITDA, and we're about, uh, I don't know, a third of the way there. At that point, the agency has value. It can be sold. But uh, what I'd rather do is use some of the resources that we are getting from Cardinal to start software or other things related to marketing. Those types of companies that are more scalable will sell for 15, 20 times revenue numbers. And so that's what we're looking to do. I'm more of a creative, so I'm looking to create and Right now, Cardinal's more of an execution phase of you know, P's and Q's and making sure we grow a little this, that, and the other, and that's cool. I'm happy to do it, but I'm also looking forward to starting things that help Cardinal, that are, and we'll have everything at the nest. It'll be one happy family. Yes, ma'am? In those early days when you were doing the cold calling, um, who were you trying to get a hold of? And, and like, what other things did you do to, to, to make those sales? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So small business is what most of us would be going after when we start, right? And so I got a list of new businesses that were got licenses from DeKalb County or whatever. We started cold calling them. That wasn't the best way to go. We are in agencies. We're in marketing. So find everybody that's already marketing or uh, go pick up. What worked for us is we went and picked up mailers and all those like new home things that you have outside of Eckerd and, and Rite Aid and we would call all the advertisers. They're already advertising. They have an advertising budget. It made sense to call on them. That worked better for us than uh, just cold calling new businesses. So that worked well. We also got ranked on Google for our keywords and so we still are six years later number one for Atlanta SEO and everything related to that kind of stuff and digital marketing. So we got a ton of business from that. We've outgrown it though. Um, the leads that are coming are very small businesses and now we're having to transform our marketing and go more after agency keywords and vertical specific stuff like fast casual marketing and QSR marketing and those changing. And I don't know what the heck we're going to do next. I was so used to getting those leads and selling them and now they come in and I'm like, well, I'm sorry, we can't help you anymore. I don't know how the hell we're going to get leads now. Uh, networking is good. Don't go to the chamber stuff. The chamber was a waste of time. I wasted a lot of time at the chambers. I think the Atlanta chamber can be good if you're in one of the larger type things. Um, 
If you can get into the CEO or the Vistage groups, the peer groups uh, with other CEOs, that worked well for us for a number of years as well. Cool? Yeah. Do digital marketing for yourself, I guess, is the cobbler's kids never wear shoes. What else we got? I have another yeah, question. I'm sure that I know you and the lady over in the church you probably um, experience this as well, is that clients making you play the guessing game when it comes to budget. Uh -huh. And how do you kind of get over that? Because I don't have an agency, I have an event planning company, sure. and it's always, we present our fee. Well, they always say, oh, we don't know what our budget is. And then you present a fee and it's like, oh, it's too high. Well, <laughs> then you had a budget, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So how do you kind of get over that hump? Do you have set pricing for everyone or, you know, how do you kind of play that? Yeah, so it's not set pricing. Everything's custom. And if you do have set pricing, tell everybody it's custom. Nobody wants to feel like they're getting a cookie cutter package, right? Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, when, when a lead initially comes in, I will just, I'll tell them. I, I'll ask them sometimes, do you have a budget? You're asking for a lot. Do you have a number in mind? And, and most of them will say, no, we don't have a budget. Especially owner operators will not tell you. They will not, it's their paycheck, right? It's the mortgage you're paying you. Uh, so they won't tell you nine times out of 10. So you just say, okay, well, I understand you don't know where you're at. Let me give you an example. Typically when we work with plumbers on SEO for a local campaign, the client will, you know, the budget will range five to 10,000 a month or whatever it is. And so, and then they go, oh, uh, that's a little too much. And then you're like, well, good. So we have partners that can handle your type of business. Let me connect you and then get a referral fee. For who you connect them with, okay? Always go higher than lower. You can come down, you can't come up. And also if you come in higher than they were expecting, you're looked at like the premium brand, right? Right. Right. And you are a premium brand. Absolutely. So you want them to see you that way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Any other questions? Do my still want to work at Cardinal? Yep. Good. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. And then uh, uh -huh. sorry, one more question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how you scale work with a team of seven. So you're having the pods of seven people with yeah. a lot of different areas of focus. Obviously seven people aren't working on the same client at one time. Right. How do you how do you divide that up between the team? Um, the managers traffic it, I don't know exactly. Um, the scaling is, is, is tricky, right? And so then once they're all hitting their capacity on that pod, you have to start another pod, but there's not enough work yet for that pod. And so you, it's a heavy investment to, you have to go hire the SEO person before there's enough SEO work for that one client. It's tricky. We're running into roadblocks with the scaling of the pods. Um, that's why we, part of the reason we offloaded a bunch of clients that were on a pod, it was dragging them down from the bigger clients. Um, yeah, it's not tricky. We don't have it figured out yet. We just saw with running integrated campaigns, it was really important. And we've, we've seen the benefits of the pod um, collaborating on some of the bigger campaigns, not doing duplicate keyword research between SEO and paid search, you know, and stuff like that. So more to come. I, I hope to give a presentation next year to whomever will hear it, and I can update everybody on how the pod. We are nine months into it. It was really rough at the beginning, really rough. And... Um, because we had people sitting together, but the work hadn't been divided out. You almost have to grow into it so that there's enough work for each pod. We ran into a lot of problems. Meredith works on the Cox Media Group pod, um, and that one has gone phenomenally well. So it's all one client. There's seven or eight people. I think there's eight, eight people working on that pod, right? And so that client is so different from the rest of the Cardinal clients. Um, it's more their local plumbers and lighting companies and stuff like that. So they're running different systems. And so separating that pod out from the Cardinal way of doing things was really important. So they run their own system and that runs really effectively. The Cardinal stuff is, is a little more creative and we're trying to figure out how to get the pods more, more cohesive. But uh, for them it works really well. It was, it was really killing us when we had people working on reports for Cardinal and then Cox Media Group as well. It's totally different what they wanted to see. It's much more basic. And so switching systems in your head didn't work for us. So we just gave people one system to run. Um, and uh, people that come into the agency, well, if they're fresh, at a college, we'll typically start at the Cox Media Group, and then we'll then we'll start working them into some of the more creative pods and stuff like that. Make sense? Cool. Any more questions? One or two more? You guys good? Everybody hungry? All right, good. Thanks for your time. Appreciate all of you coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. See ya.